Neoelichiosis, a little-known tick-borne disease. Ticks transmit not only Lyme disease and tick-borne encephalitis, but also other diseases, such as neoelichiosis. A team of scientists from the University of Warmia and Missouri, UWM, is conducting research on the bacteria that cause this little-known disease in humans. Neoelichia micarensis are bacteria pathogenic to humans, whose vectors are ticks. They cause severe symptoms. The problem is that these are non-specific and generalized symptoms. Different in different people and similar to the symptoms of other diseases. Informed drive. Katarzyna Kubiak from the Department of Medical Biology of the School of Public Health of the University of Warmia and Missouri, quoted on the university's website. The symptoms of neoelichiosis in humans are not yet well described in the scientific literature, as the pathogen has only recently been known. Its discovery in ticks was described in the early 2000s and since then it has been identified in tick populations in Europe, Asia and North America. However, in the publications there are more and more reports of cases of neoelichiosis in people in these areas. When infected with neoelichia micarensis, the patient has a high fever up to 40 degrees Celsius, cough, joint pain, allergies, nausea, diarrhea, thrombotic complications, and even strokes or enlarged spleen and liver. Dr. Kubiak noted that, doctors have difficulties in linking such different and non-specific ailments in patients with neoelichiosis and treat people in the dark, which means for a long time and often with little effect. While the symptoms of Lyme disease and TBE can be diagnosed by doctors, the symptoms of neoelichiosis after being bitten by a tick infected with neoelichia micarensis, not. Also, patients usually do not associate these symptoms with a tick bite. Emphasized drive. Katarzyna Kubiak. The team conducting research on neoelichia micarensis in Poland is working to increase knowledge and awareness about this disease. Greater awareness of doctors about the occurrence of diseases transmitted by ticks, other than Lyme disease and tick-borne encephalitis, will contribute to faster recognition of nonspecific symptoms and selection of more effective methods of their treatment noted Dr. Katarzyna Kubiak. Awareness and knowledge about the risks associated with ticks are also the basis for the prevention of infections occurring after being bitten by these parasites. Scientists from the UWM are participating in a large project in which scientists from 16 European countries, including from Germany, Portugal, Denmark and Turkey, will examine the state of knowledge and awareness of Europeans about ticks and the pathogens and diseases they carry, and ways to prevent tick bites. The initiator and leader of this project is Professor Agustin Estrada Peña from the University of Zaragoza in Spain. Dr. Kubiak noted that the results of the survey will help better plan educational programs that raise people's knowledge and awareness that ticks are not only Lyme disease and tick-borne encephalitis. Dash. In addition to the little-known ehrlichiosis, people are also exposed to human anaplasmosis, human babesiosis, rickettsiosis and tick-borne recurrent fevers, calculated Dr. Kubiak. The survey on knowledge about ticks will soon be distributed among all UWM employees and students. Last year, scientists from the UWM started cooperation in this area with scientists from the Institute of Hygiene and Tropical Diseases at Nova University in Lisbon, led by Professor Ana Domingos. A new model of artificial intelligence can translate thoughts into text.
developed by researchers at the University of Texas at Austin. A new artificial intelligence system can translate a person's brain activity using an MRI scan into a continuous stream of text. A system called a semantic decoder could help people who are unable to communicate through speech, such as stroke survivors. However, it also raises some concerns. Reading someone's mind sounds like science fiction, but researchers at the University of Texas at Austin have done just that. The artificial intelligence model they developed is capable of translating thoughts into the written word using non-invasive scanning methods. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Nature Neuroscience. The new technology is based on models similar to those that power ChatGPT, OpenAI or Barda from Google. Unlike other language decoding systems under development, the new system does not require patients to have surgical implants, making the process non-invasive. Participants also don't have to use only words from a list dictated to them. Brain activity is measured using a functional magnetic resonance imaging FMRI, scanner. First, the participant, while in the scanner, listens to various podcasts for a longer period, about 15 hours. Meanwhile, a new system monitors his brain activity. In other words, the decoder is training. Then, after training the system, when a volunteer listens to or imagines a new story, the model generates a text stream. Of course, a decoder cannot synthesize a person's thoughts word for word. But it can often capture the essence of what that person is thinking. After extensive training, he is able to generate text that is a good and sometimes accurate representation of the volunteer's thoughts. For a non-invasive method, it's a real step up from what's been done before, which was usually done in single words or short sentences, said Alex Huth of UT Austin. We get a model to continuously decode the language over a longer period of time, he added. About half the time the decoder was trained to monitor a participant's brain activity. The machine generated text that matched thoughts with varying degrees of precision, sometimes even exactness. For example, in one experiment, a participant listened to a voiceover saying, I don't have a driver's license yet. The decoder translated it as, she hasn't even started learning to drive yet. In turn, the words, I didn't know whether to scream, cry, or run away. Instead I said, leave me alone, decoder translated as, she started screaming and crying and then she just said, I told you to leave me alone. Participants in the experiments, in addition to listening and imagining different stories, were also asked to watch four short, silent films in a scanner, one of them below. The semantic decoder was able to use their brain activity to describe certain events from the recordings they were watching with some accuracy. The authors of the new technology explained that there are no concerns about the misuse of the decoder, at least in the current development phase. According to them, decoding works only in cooperation with participants who voluntarily participated in decoder training. The results for people who the decoder was not trained on were incomprehensible. And if the participants on whom the decoder was trained later resisted, for example, thinking about other things, the results were also useless. We take concerns that this could be used for evil purposes very seriously. We looked for solutions to avoid that, said Jerry Tang of UT Austin. We want to make sure that people only use this type of technology when they want to and it helps them. The system is currently not practical for use outside of the lab due to its reliance on the rather long time needed to train it on an fMRI scanner. But the researchers believe their work could be used in other, more portable brain imaging systems as well. 
It is hoped that in the future, further development of such technology will help patients who are no longer able to communicate through speech, such as stroke survivors.